Yodelay, yodelay, yodelay. Hee-hoo. <laughs> that wasn't planned to stay in the episode, but you know what? Fuck it. It might. It might stay in. Welcome back. Winers too. A solo episode. And your girl is in rare form because Hurricane Barrel came through Houston, Texas. Listen, I want to start off by saying I am safe. I'm alive. My loved ones are. And I am so very thankful, grateful, indebted to the world. But remind me why I moved to Texas. Like, I love Houston, Texas. But what are we doing? We've got a tornado last month or two months ago. Then we have Hurricane Barrel come through. And this was only a Category 1, okay? Um, Centerpoint can't, can't get their shit together. Centerpoint's the energy company out here for anyone not from Houston. Centerpoint. I've been seeing memes going around saying Centerpointless. <laughs> Center pointless. What are you doing? What's going on? What's your job? Like memes going around being like, Center Point, we're up here. What do we do? Um, we're up here on the pole. Tell us what to do. Like, we got this because you don't. It's crazy. Again, this was a category one, but like, can I just remind everyone who like never has problems with losing their electricity that like what a luxury electricity is? Power hot water i was only out this time for 30 36 hours not quite two full days thank thank god thank you thank you thank you and i don't know how by the way i don't know how the sound is going to come out from this episode because i don't know how i have power back three to four houses on my block have power back and i'm included the house next to me has a very <laughs> luxurious i'm happy for them i really am but their generator is very loud and like do what you gotta do boo i get it um but i don't know how the sound is gonna be and like sorry i have to record my podcast can you turn off your power no it's not happening <sighs> so needless to say cheers to y'all i'm s nobody likes a bragger like if if you're listening to this later because you don't have power yet welcome back if you're able to listen to it like tomorrow, like the day of release, today is Wednesday, the uh, God, what is the day? We're in July, Wednesday, the 10th. This episode will be out tomorrow. And also, that's why I've got a long night ahead of me. I was supposed to record this solo episode. I don't know any time in the past couple weeks, but why be ahead of the game and why? Why let that continue? So I just let it all go to the side and waited to the last minute to record. And then we have a hurricane. So then I couldn't record Monday, couldn't record Tuesday. And now we're here Wednesday, the day before my podcast episodes comes out. And so I've got a lot long night ahead. Um, but like, I have a hundredth episode celebration coming up. So now it's not the time to skip an episode. You know what I'm saying? Like, now's not the time to be like, mm, actually, it's going to be episode 99 celebration. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, no, I can't. Um, because in season two of the pod, like when I had a different setup, I was in a different apartment. Like I would absolutely frequently, I was going through some serious anxiety and mental health problems. Um, and so I would be like, oh yeah, no, I'm not going to record tonight. And I would just be like, sorry guys, no episode, like see you next week. Um, but can't do that because we have a whole hundredth episode celebration. So that would throw everything off. So here I am. Everything's fine. I'm missing three fingernails um, and no shade. But I did. I, I don't think I, just, I don't know if I got hit on um, by a lovely lesbian girl or just she commented on my fingers. Zoom in um, because if you're watching it, I'm missing my index finger and my ring finger. And I don't know. Use your imagination. Why would um, a lesbian woman have those short? Like, I get it. I mean, for personal things i totally get it um so anyway what's funny is i went to the bar <laughs> went to the bar <laughs> i'm drinking now i went to the bar here or there i'm always at the bar um i was at the bar with great idea redhead rachel recently and the bartender shout out to sam at state of grace love you um he mentioned 
like that's okay you can just pretend that you like girls until you get your nails fixed because they're broken off and i was dying i was like no seriously that's what it is and then a couple of days later at an event which i'm going to tell you about the event was pedro's emergency event event um i was talking to this girl who's lovely and for a long time and then at the end she was like oh my god she's like i i was saying how pedro's ruining my life how he has broken my two fingernails off my acrylics off and she's like oh she's like i saw your nails and i didn't know if you were a lesbian too <laughs> And you know what? Maybe this is a sign. Maybe this is I saw a sign. Opened up my eyes, I saw the sign. Maybe this is the sign. Like, forget about men. Go for girls. No, I can't. I wish I can't. Not at this time. Anywho, ski can't get my nails fixed because of hurricane, and now I'm behind with work. So work and work podcast. And so these are the nails. Like I've just, I don't know if I've been, I've been in worse shape. I'm being dramatic, but like missing three fingernails, like typically I'm at the salon immediately getting a fix. Or what I do is keep the nail and put it on there, use some super glue. Or if that gets a little too like worn off, you know what I mean? Like sometimes it doesn't stick anymore when you put too much super glue on. I wrap a band-aid around that motherfucker and it lasts me a couple more days. So the fact that I literally was like, F it, and I threw the nails away, just can't deal with this. That's like really saying something. So that's an important elephant in the room to address. Um, another thing to address is I chose these braids. I used to wear these braids at a restaurant I used to work at. I've talked about this on season two of the pod. So if you know, you know, um, but the, my coworkers, my Hispanic coworkers in the kitchen used to call me La Lencha. And I don't know what it is about me, but like, I'm not one of those girls who can like put a messy bun, put these braids in and like, look cute. Like, I don't know what it is, but actually I kind of like it with this hat, this adultish wines hat. Okay. Oh, cr- which is going to be available for sale at my live show. Are you coming? Uh, don't worry. We're going to be getting to that. Okay, let's finish out the hurricane. First a tornado, now a hurricane. Some people still don't have power. I thank God for power. Oh, my God. You know what's crazy is people are using the Whataburger app of Whataburger fast food restaurant locations to know where power is up and running in their neighborhoods. What the hell is that? Like, that is crazy. Centerpoint's app has been down, apparently. Like, I don't pay enough attention. Centerpoint's app has been down since the tornado that happened in early May? Mid-May? What is going on there? Like, who runs this, this planet, this world, this town, this city? Who uh, and like I don't want the job. I'm not asking for the job. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to figure it out. Like the people want to (sighs) know. I don't know. Um, one thing I didn't do. Okay, so I already talked about. I didn't wash my hair in preparation for the storm. I did get some like canned food, which I never even opened. I forgot to get gas in my car. And just like remember that for the next time. Like if you are in a hurricane town, city, state situation everyone's out of gas the gas stations are limited there's lines down the road to get into the gas stations that do have gas and i finally got into a gas station that was only offering what is it 93 97 the most expensive one i think it's 87 no what is it 87 91 93 whatever the i don't even know what those are propane levels propane what are those numbers on the gas and why did they matter? Anyway, all I know is with my forerunner, I can put the cheapest in, whether that's 83 or 87 or whatever the number is. I just go to the far one to the left, and that's all I know. Anyway, the one on the far right was the only one that was available. Of course, I'm going to get it. I turn around for one second. I got a quarter of my gas tank was $32. I took that thing right out, and I said, I'm, I'd rather lose gas on the side of the road. I'd rather be stuck on the side of the road than spend... 30, 60, 90, 120 dollars in a gas tank. What? That is crazy. Who is putting that kind of gas in their car? And I'm sure the people who are have bigger gas tanks than me. And you know what? Was that safe to put that kind of gas in my car? Come to think of it, I would imagine like it's better. It's a premium gas, it's more expensive. Do you think that matters? 
<sighs> this is what I'm saying. Like, who is supposed to tell people these things? I need help. I need a partner. I need someone to be helping me through this life. Like, I don't want to do it alone anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do it alone anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I want somebody who can go get gas in my car and love me and be like, I did this for you, for us. <laughs> oh dear lord anyway um okay (laughs) i did see there were like a couple deaths and i just can't lie to you as i was laying throughout the night when it was just like wind whistling through my door and windows in my apartment i was like this could be it because the sound is just like so crazy the wind sound is so aggressive um but also like these people died, I think, both from trees falling on them. And, like, there's trees, I mean, down everywhere, but I'm just specifically talking about myself because I'm a selfish asshole, obviously. But how do you how do you know if you should leave? Like, where should... Isn't everyone potentially going to die by a tree falling in a hurricane in their house? Like, is it just wing it? Are we just winging it? Hang out? see what happens type of thing because the tree could fall this way 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 right on top of me and like i'm out of here you know what i'm saying like i thought about sleeping with my fanny pack on with my phone in my fanny pack in case something did happen i would be able to potentially reach for that because it would be in my fanny pack but also by the way no cell service so i'm not sure what that would have done to help me but it was a thought that crossed my mind but then i continued to just sleep in my sports bra and underwear like it was a normal day so i guess i wasn't really that worried like because if i was that worried maybe i should have slept with my sneakers on and like clothes if i had to go running i could easily run out my door but I didn't do that. I just panicked the whole night thinking I might have to instead. So I guess I guess I was just in the mood to risk it. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, hot ass apartment, no power, no electricity. Everything's closed around you. Like it just feels like um, the wild, wild west out here. And then I was telling someone today that like, when the tornado happened, I was a, a a single person, no child to care for. And now I have Pedro the pod dog, Pedro Fetty Wap. We're going to get to the Fetty Wap situation in a minute, but that's his new nickname. But now I have this dog that I would lay down my life for pretty much. Like I've felt that way a couple times now. And it's just an entirely different feeling. And you people have kids Some of y'all have children that can, some of them can speak and some of them can't, but like, wow, I'm impressed by you and I'm overwhelmed by the idea. And maybe I'll stick to that fact of me and maybe be not so sure that I want any kids, you know, like it's a lot. No power with kids whining, screaming, crying about being hot and sweaty and bored, stuck in the house with nothing to do. Sounds absolutely fucking miserable. I had a dog that was whining and wanting to go outside. And I just kept saying, what don't you understand? No potty breaks in a hurricane. But he didn't understand that. And so he sure had me go out in a hurricane. I'm sure my neighbor and pastor when I was walking out, she thought I was an absolute nightmare. A mess, I mean. She thought I was a mess and a nightmare, I'm sure. (laughs) So we made it through. Well, some of y'all are still in it. And I hope it wraps up soon. But like, what are we going to do in a category two, three, four, five? How high do the categories go up? Why did I move to Houston? Huh. Um, Pedro, the son I never thought I was going to have. I was so worried about him in this hurricane and then the aftermath when the hurricane stopped, it was obviously just storming and no power. And I live in like a 720, 40 foot, 740 square foot apartment building. All of my windows are cocked shut, which I'm sure is some sort of safety hazard. I'm sure that's not supposed to be the case. Um, 
So there's no airflow. There's no AC. And is 700 square feet that much bigger than a car? Like, I felt like I was leaving him in a hot car with no windows. So I went to work the next day when the power came back on at my work office. And I just, like, couldn't even concentrate. Also, because of his Fetty Wapness. Pedro is officially Mr. Pedro Fetty Wap. Uh, where do I begin with this guy? I just didn't know I was going to care for something so much. So I go to my friend's birthday on Saturday. I get home. Well, first of all, let me start off. Saturday morning, I take Pedro for a walk, as we normally do. He's sniffing around as he normally does. Mind and, he's not minding his own business. That's what he's not doing, and that's what he needs to be doing. If he wants to keep his house roof over his head, I'm going to go broke over his ass. Anyway, he's sniffing around, and I see him sniff something and quite literally shake his head for like eight to 10 seconds. No exaggeration. Like after he like exits the little grassy area, he's like, like shaking his head. I check his face. He's fine. Move on with our day. He continues to shit and pee a million more times. I'm sure of it. Go to my friend's birthday, come back. So I was gone for a couple hours, come back, take him out again. Da da da. We're having fun. We're playing. He's not settling down. So I give him some peanut butter with his Kong love that but he doesn't even like that doesn't even keep him that busy anyway i was finally like whoo okay a little reprieve i get a few more minutes of of quiet so he's on his little bed playing with his peanut butter and then he starts being uninterested in it so we start playing more fetch in the house sorry downstairs neighbor (laughs) um it was pouring rain outside so then he comes up and like gets you know close to my face when he brings the ball back and his eye is not looking like an eye it's not looking like an eyeball at all it's looking a little detached i mean in his socket but like a little detached a little slow a little slow on the uptake there um super red it looks like the bottom of his eye is like catching on something in his eye i freak out I call one of my friends immediately and she's a dog mom and I, she loves dogs. And she's like, I, w- I, I was like, should I go to the emergency bed? Like, do you think, or am I just, should I give it some time? You know, I'm a new dog mom. Help me. She's like, ah, for peace of mind. And yeah, like, and I was trying to show her on FaceTime. Of course he was going crazy. She couldn't see. She's like, yeah, I'd, I'd take him to the ER. So she helps me send me a couple of vet options. I actually was just talking to friends of mine at my friend's birthday about their vet preferences because I'm an annoying dog mom now and that's all I talk about um so I end up going to the emergency vet on my way to the emergency vet I am hysterical I'm thinking I'm a terrible mother I put him in the corner on his bed so he could eat his peanut butter and leave me alone for 20 minutes and I didn't notice he had a freaking practically halfway there functioning eyeball like what the hell is wrong with me so i am hysterical i called a couple people to call to calm me down and carolyn answered thank god talked me off the ledge tried to talk me off the ledge i was hysterically crying sobbing saying i'm a bad mom everyone's gonna judge me when i get to the emergency vet and then also on on the other hand i'm like this probably isn't an emergency and i'm probably freaking out for no reason and i'm probably gonna go spend four hundred dollars on this vet bill right get to the vet they get me right in the vet tech is lovely and she's like totally get it i see what you're saying she obviously assesses the situation she's like listen if you talk to the vet it's gonna be 160 bucks talking to me is free and i was like i like free i like that okay what do you got for me what kind of advice and she's like i would probably i'm a dog mom i got pities too you know and i it just looks like it's a little irritation i was like well it's not doing the eye the thing that it was doing before but like you know it, it's it's doing this weird thing she's like just try go to the store and get some benadryl because if you do the 160 bucks talking to the vet they're going to want to do a stain on the eye which is going to be 215 dollars, and then we're going to give you an antibiotic that i'd like try the benadryl first like i think you can hang there and i was like okay okay i like that so i felt good about it and i'm still i, I think it was the rightish thing to do at that point rush to the store and then i'm like what is the time limit of leaving your dog in a car like with like can you do that at all like if i'm running into the grocery store and i have the dog can i do that is that is am i gonna come out to some um people smashing open my window because i ran in to get doggy benadryl for three minutes like they don't know that i've only been in there for three minutes so then i was panicking so anyway sprinted in there got the benadryl came back out given that night and the next couple dosages a couple days 
it kept getting better and then getting like bad again. Like it just wasn't consistently a weird eye. It was like randomly a weird eye, but definitely red the whole time. So then the hurricane's rolling in Sunday. My vets closed. I was like, okay, like I'll just try a couple doses of the Benadryl, see what goes on. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. The discharge of the eye gets worse. It's just, and I'm like, uh, just panicking, just panicking. Cause like, he can't tell me what's wrong with him. I'm a bad mom, the whole thing. So then finally Tuesday when I'm in my work office and I just can't even handle, I'm in just the absolute worst fucking mood, like leaving my dog in a hot house. And then especially with this eye issue that we have, we don't know what's going on. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure this dog out. You know, my coworkers are like, I think you'll, I think it'll be better that you go figure it out. Like, even though it's a little bit more expensive. Oh, by the way, I was calling other vets like to go to a regular vet, but everyone was closed because of no power because of the hurricane. So the hurricane really owes me 160 fucking dollars plus some. Anyway, so I go to one emergency vet, which was closer to my house and on my work. I like break. I thought it would be more, you know, better time wise. Um, it was a very strange place because I was like in the, in a, in a room with, in a room with everyone. I was in a room. It wasn't a waiting room. It was like the vet room with all these dogs and cats. I saw one dog poop itself on a bed. I saw one person being told that their dog was going to die and they start crying. And I was like, you know what? I can't. And that's where I met uh, the girl who said that she thought maybe I was a lesbian too, because of my missing fingernails. Um, which shout out, was it Amy? Amanda. I forget. Shout out. Um, I hope your dog is feeling better. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I was like, I can't wait here anymore. Like I'm just feeling so exposed, so uncomfortable. This is like obviously a very emergency vet. And like, I just have this weird thing with my dog's eye. Like he's not going to die. Is he, is he going to die? I'm not sure. So I end up going, leaving and going back to the original emergency care pers- place that I went to that Saturday. Guys, They, I paid $385 for them to tell me that my dog had pink eye. And so for me, that's crazy. (laughs) They were lovely, by the way. Sunset Animal Hospital, shout out. Love them. Love is a little excessive. Like, don't love somebody who's charging me that much money, but I get it. You got a job to do. Um, anyway, yeah, like. $400. $400. It was $160 to be seen by the vet. Immediately he was like, um, oh yeah, I think it's conjunctivitis. And you know what I'm thinking now while I'm talking to you guys is, don't you think the vet tech, if it was that easy to tell, don't you think she should have been like, it's probably conjunctivitis. He probably just needs some eye drops. Maybe she really just thought it was an allergic reaction. Was she fucking with me? Hmm. Anyway, so Pedro has conjunctivitis, and which is essentially pink eye. It's not the same strain as pink eye that humans get, but it is pink eye. It's ca- it could be caused by debris. It could be caused by bacterial floating in the air. It could be caused by him putting his face in somebody's poop, dog poop, um, grass. It could be caused by anything. Um, so anyway, $400 later. Actually, you know what, though? You know what, though? The vet's internet was down. And they were like, hey, we can't charge you um, because our internet's down, but like, we'll call you and charge you. And they haven't called me yet. (laughs) So it's been over 24 hours, but like, maybe I don't have their internet back. I'm sure I'm going to get a call next week. I'm sure of it. Anyway, pray for me. Hope that I don't. Um, any hooski. I'm not a bad dog mom, but I am I am an overwhelmed dog mom. I would say that pretty easily. Like, I don't know how you guys do it today. I, I, I've also become like just like late, not lazy about my life. But like, for example, my on air sign, if you're watching on YouTube, like is normally lit. But like I was already in my podcast room. Pedro's already settled in his crate. Turning that sign on, I would have to go get the little um, the charger piece that goes into the wall to like 
put that on and like i can't risk well he's really fine in his crate he doesn't mind it but like i can't risk him thinking i'm done with work and like ready to play with him again you know what i mean so i was like fuck it on air signs staying off don't give a fuck about that um today i went on a walk one of my shoes was not at the door so i walked in a tennis shoe and a slide that's how i took pedro for one walk and that was the walk where my neighbors who i don't know very well they just moved back into their house um decided to talk to me and i had a tennis shoe on and a slide on with some weird high socks so that's just i just get it now i just get it life is stressful and then you add a human or a dog or somebody else that you're supposed to be taking care of who can't even speak for themselves girl bye overwhelmed i'm an overwhelmed dog mom okay sorry for the long pause i was drinking wine i really need more ice cube i need a fake ice cube and i need more wine but again i'm not gonna go alert pedro i'm just not gonna do it If you don't know, now you know, yo. If you're not coming to my live podcast show, July 25th, what are you doing? What are you doing? There's people flying from out of state for this show. That is so cool. And thank you so much. How exciting, you guys. Okay, so the last solo episode, I think I announced the show yeah okay the teasing was over and i finally said the announcement what the announcement was and so let me just give you an idea of what a boss i am (laughs) no seriously i for so many reasons i'm proud of myself but like okay let's start with 100 episodes that's huge i saw a statistic where like let's say there's I'm not going to get it right, but just I'm going to try. Let's say there's 2 billion podcasters. 1.7 billion podcasters don't make it past three episodes. Again, I don't know if the stats are so right, but like the majority of podcasts, there's so many podcasts out there. The majority of podcasts don't make it past three episodes. I'm throwing a live in person show to celebrate 100 episodes. And that's after season one that Carolyn and I did together, by the way, that's season two and season three the existing season that we're in right now so actually there's even more episodes but whatever we're still calling it 100 (sighs) that is insane i can't believe it and what started out as like uh it was gonna be more of like a mm, it's gonna be like a little backyard party type of thing like it was gonna be like at this winery which i love um and just like come and enjoy and like purchase your own wine and then like there's the food truck so like go get a item from the food truck if you want um and like just hang out like cool laid back vibes it's turned into a little bit more of an event i had to move the party because we are in houston texas and the heat has been so crazy and my winery that i was gonna have it at my <laughs> the winery that i was gonna have it at is an open air winery it didn't have ac in it and i just in this heat like in the summertime, I was just wasn't going to work. So I had to move the event to a different venue. And now it's it's turned into like kind of like a wedding, <laughs> except for, um, yeah, I'm not getting married. But um, there is going to be a live event, which is instead of people exchanging their vows, we're going to be exchanging digs. I'm sure of it. So 100 episode celebration, Houston, Texas, July 25th. I've been working my ass off preparing for the show i don't feel like stressed i just feel very busy i feel like i'm constantly i don't even feel and i guess just like i was talking to my therapist about it like i just don't feel that overwhelmed by it which is not my typical personality trait especially with something like this. Like I get very, um, I get overwhelmed easily when there's too much on my plate and like I move from task to task and I bop around before finishing one and it just causes for more frustration and confusion, confusion. And, um, it's not, not good. Um, and so I just really like, that's another reason I'm proud of myself. Kudos to me. Like 
handling stress well, I don't feel stressed. I just feel swamped. (laughs) I don't feel stressed. I just feel swamped. I just feel like my to-do list is never ending. Um, But this is the first event I'm throwing ever, really. So uh, that's par for the course. Like, it just feels like natural. I feel like I've never interviewed four guests before. I've only ever had one guest on the pod. And I just feel kind of like it's going to be what it is. Like, I just feel confident about it. I don't know what we're talking about yet, but like also just feel confident about it. Um, I do better when it's like when push comes to shove and you just come up with, I don't know, my thinking process is better that way. Like if I think too much about it, I'm going to overthink about it. So I'm not even like thinking about topics for the the pod episode. <laughs> um, probably next week I'll start to like outline some some things, but I am so excited in the the interest from people has been overwhelming the interest from like people buying tickets for the show, but also the interest in people being involved with the show as far as donating things or sponsoring things. Um, and just like good friends of mine who I really respect, like I just feel really excited about this and the future. And, um, I'm, I'm just so excited. And I hope that, I hope that you all can make it because it's going to be a, a really good memory. I mean, also, like, if I fail, that's a good memory. It's a, definitely a memory. I don't know about good, but I'm not going to fail. Come on. Look at me. <laughs> Hear me. Look at me. What are we doing here? Um, no, I'm so excited. So, obviously, if you haven't seen on my social media, maybe you're not a social media girly guy person. Um, it's a live podcast show. My guests are as follows. Carolina Sanchez from the Nightcap, who shout out to Jared uh, Seahorn from the Port Horseman podcast. He was the one who introduced me to Carolina and we just got along. And like, I absolutely consider her a friend now. She's so down to earth. She's so dope. Um, she's such she's so good at her job. Um, she's married. She has two children. She um, has an award on her belt. She's a host of obviously the Nightcap TV show on Fox at 1130. Plug, plug, plug. Um, love her. So she's on Dr. Viviana Coles, who was on Married at First Sight for a few seasons. She was one of the intimacy experts on the show. Um, and now she's or now she's been a relationship and sex therapist for many, many years, I think 20 years in Houston, Texas. So she's like, You know, she's a little, I think she's a little like not underdog because like she's just a little like she doesn't cuss, (laughs) but like she'll give it to you. Like she serves you your ass on a platter, but like she won't say ass. You know what I'm saying? Like she'll just be like, she'll tell you you're wrong without like being rude about it. But it's kind of nice. It's kind of she gets you. She's so smart. So I'm excited about her. And then we have Phil from the Poor Horseman podcast, which good Lord have mercy. If you want to laugh, you got to come to the show and also listen to the past episodes with Phil because it's wild. Phil is love you, Phil, but he is chaos and kind of like me. Like, I think Phil and I, I mean, maybe I'm less chaotic than Phil, but like we're both pretty chaotic. <laughs> um, so I don't know if he's like single or dating right now, but like that could be some fun conversation. Dr. Viviana, um, obviously poor horse and podcast, like love all four of them. And actually creators guild is producing the show, which is the production arm there. Um, and LP will be there. Pod dad. Okay. Also KC will be there with his wife, Brittany Seahorn. Okay. Um, so that's that. And then we have Chris Young or CY as he is more well known for. Um, he is a friend of mine. I always like to say first, he's also my best friend's husband, (laughs) but like you are like you're a friend of mine and you're my best friend's husband. I just want to make sure that's clear. Like you're not just my best friend's husband. Do you know what I mean? Like I value our friendship. Okay. Um, Anyway, so he is coming on. He was on season one of the podcast with Carolyn and I. He hasn't been on since. I don't know if he's been avoiding me or like what the deal is, but he's always got some shit to talk. He's always got some shit to say to me. Um, The banter is hilarious. So he's obviously married. Phil is single or maybe dating, but like not married. Then Dr. Vivian is married and Caroline is married, but like also chaotic. You know what I mean? Like talk about sex and dicks and stuff on her. Um 
on the nightcap. So love that. I just think it's going to be such a fun environment. Traveling Spear Bar is doing the drinks. Okay. We got some craft cocktails. Complimentary. That means if there's cash for tip, bring that. That's complimentary. Um, and then we've got a photo booth. So bring your pearly whites. Bring your smile. Uh, we've got a DJ, DJ Shante. What? So excited about that. Uh, what else? I'm missing. Oh, the wine is provided by OST Wine Club. Huge shout out to them. I've been working with them for a few months. They have a wine club um, all throughout Texas, but Houston is where it's based from. So it's OST Wine Club powered by OST Liquor Store. Um and if you want more information about that, I think I have them in my highlight on my Instagram story. But anyway, they're donating the wine. Um, what did I miss? Oh, merch. I told you this hat that I have on, that's going to be available. Can't wait for that. Um, it's going to be a fun time. So doors open at 6. Show starts at 630. So get yourself a drink. Maybe take a quick photo. Sit your ass down. Be on time. Don't be late. Don't be the one who's late. Um, show will go till about 8 p.m. And then we're drinking. And then we're toasting. And we're dancing from 8 to 10. 8 to 10. My sisters are coming in town. All three of my sisters. I don't know the last time we've all been in a room together. But so very grateful and thankful for that. Like, that's amazing. Um, And a couple of my friends are coming from California as well. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I did to deserve that. It's very, very sweet. And I'm just, I'm really excited for the show. So if you're just buying a ticket now, you missed out on pre-sale prices. But here's what, but here's what, what, what in the butt, what, what in the butt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm fine. Cut that, right? Um, if you go on, whether you listen on, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, if you screenshot leaving me a review. So on Apple, you can leave a star review. It's just stars. It's not a written review. Screenshot that or on Spotify. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Fuck that up. Go and leave me a star review on Spotify. And then on Apple, you can leave a written review. Just telling me how. What does Claude, what does Girl With No Job say on the toast? How beautiful talented and wickedly stunning we are and by we i mean me so i'll leave a little compliment um and i'll give you a a promo code to use for the ticket and holy shit i can't believe it i gotta get to work like also another just tooting my own horn here i'm planning a hundred episode event oh by the way i want to say real quick okay so creator skilled is producing the show and then women and wine social boss empire is producing the product okay no 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 no. let me get this right creators guild is producing the audio and video podcast social women social boss (laughs) you guys i i swear to god i don't know if it's being in front of the camera this is all the wine i've had this much like half a glass of wine (sighs) i'm leaving that in because it is just too real maybe i'll take it out Mm, who knows (sighs) i don't really feel like editing i just don't have time to edit today okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna start again are you with me social boss empire her name is shalena she is a boss She also is involved with Women and Wine. They are producing my show, like coordinating the event, helping me plan. Thank G for her. She has been lovely. She is dotting her I's, crossing her T's, being someone who I can report to. She knows WTF she's doing. Like, she's got it down. Then Creators Guild is producing the audio and video. Bing, bang, boom. Um... That's what I got. I was going to go into a story, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. 
if I continue talking, that extends my editing and process time for the episode. And the episode will be coming out in three hours and um, 40 eight minutes so i'm gonna get going oh my god wait i have to tell you my wine of the week oh god i gotta make this quick my wine of the week is my mother effing property manager i've whined about him before many times i'm at work today minding my own business feeling super focused after the hurricane power's back on at my house i've got eye drops 400 dollar eye drops for pedro Excuse me, I just burped. I'm so sorry about that. And again, we're not editing this episode, so stay. <laughs> um, I'm just minding my own business. And what do I get? A, a door notification. Someone's at my door. I look at it. It's my property manager knocking on the door, banging on the door. He's such a banger. He's not a knocker. Management, management. I start speaking to him. I said, hey, hey, Andrew, I'm not I'm not home. I'm not home. What are you doing? Goes in my house. I've notified him about my dog. My dog is in my crate. Thank God. But like the balls you got to have to walk into somebody's house that you don't know if they're home or not. I could have been doing anything in this house. First of all, I could have been having some sex on my bed. I could have been having some sex on the couch. I could have been making coffee butt ass naked. I could have been doing anything in the world and the quickness in which he ended management and opened my goddamn door i can't even explain to you my blood pressure was through the roof i immediately go to my dog camera because just so you know fyi i got cameras all up in this bitch now okay i go to my dog camera and i'm looking around i see him walking in my house i'm then i get off that i go to call him and i'm still walking the watching the camera as he's doing this he's not answering the phone i call him twice my blood is boiling i just don't trust this man first of all this is not an emergency second of all you should notify me if it's a non-emergency why didn't you notify me i did look up my lease and it's not technically illegal what he did because it does say that like they should notify me but like if not they do still have the right to like assess damages and some shit this I've never experienced a human like this man. Like, what an invasion of privacy. So I was talking about what I could be doing while I was at home, right? Like, inappropriate. Maybe laying in bed. Maybe I had a guest here. Maybe someone was, like, there could have been anything going on. My dog could have been out of his crate. Could have bit him. Could have caused some, like, big trouble for him and I. But, like, you would have been in my home. So I don't know what we would have done about that. But anyway, I'm not home. So, like, what an invasion of privacy as well for you to be marching around my home for a non-emergent situation doing what so i texted him and i said i see that you're in my house was there an emergency and he said no there was an error sorry i had to check i had to check damages post hurricane for inspection or for insurance reasons sorry there was an error you have one job as a property manager to manage those properties, to manage those tenants. And like, why this morning when you woke your annoying ass up, didn't you say, I'm going to go check my properties and I'm going to email all the tenants one email coming, you know, coming to your home to check for hurricane problems. This is a heads up. You don't have to be home, but I will be entering your unit. Like there needs to be some sort of heads up. I can, I'm getting fired up just talking about it again. Like, Ooh, girl. I don't need, I just feel very, we don't get along anyway. And it's like, what are you doing in here? What are you looking at? Did you set up a listening device in here? Are you checking that my dog is whatever? Like, are you looking at my new dog that I informed you about? Are you checking out my podcast room? Are you trying to see what kind of equipment I have? Like, fuck you. Fuck you. Honestly. Oh, I want to report him, but like, it's not illegal, but like people got to know when I moved in here, my male uh, next door neighbor told me to be careful because he's known for entering people's units. And the, the person that used to live below me previously was in bed one time naked when he walked in her house. It's so inappropriate. <sighs> On that note, <laughs> on that note do we like my braids on that note do we like my hat 
on that note, are you coming to my show? Are you coming to my show? Love you, whiners. Really, I was going to go into some more stories and tell you about my life and stuff, but like, we're on a time limit, baby. Gotta go. Get your tickets. Link in my Instagram bio at Adultish Wines. Link uh, is Eventbrite. Buy your tickets there. Send me a screenshot of you leaving me a review. I'll give you a discount code. There are limited seats. I think there's like 24 seats left. This is Wednesday the 10th when I'm talking. So tomorrow the 11th, there might be less. So get to getting. Don't wait until the last minute. I love you all. Yay! I'll see you next Thursday. And I better see your ass on July 25th in Houston, Texas. Bye. Don't look at my nails. (laughs) 